So a few weeks ago I bought the $10 package in the Tom Clancy Humble Bundle at HumbleBundle.com and I got this collection of um, Tom Clancy uh, franchised games. So there were a lot of Rainbow Six games, um, a couple Splinter Cell games, and one of the items on this was an instant access, a guaranteed, a guaranteed place in the um, Rainbow Six Siege beta, which is what I have here right now. It is September 30th. The beta was originally supposed to end on the 28th, and it was extended another three days. And I would have made this video earlier, but then I found out it was going to be extended, so I kind of procrastinated a bit, and blah blah blah. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be running the in-game benchmark, and then I'm going to move on to playing uh, Terrorist Hunt um, in Lone Wolf mode. See, right now, if I clicked on Terrorist Hunt, I would go uh, under Matchmaking, but if I hit Spacebar, it changes it to Lone Wolf, and what that does is I'm going to be playing it solo just against AI bots. I'm going to keep the difficulty on normal because I think it ratchet, it ratchets up pretty bad if I put it up above normal. And plus, it's going to be me, just one dude, against like 22, 25 uh, terrorists. And there's going to be some, some shit flying my way. Even if they shoot as bad as stormtroopers, it's going to get real. You'll see. You'll see. Anyway, let's go on to settings here. Options. Graphics. So texture quality is very high. And isotropic filtering uh, at the highest. Pretty much as you can see, I just have everything as high as it could be. For ambient occlusion, I have it on SSBC because uh, HBAO is like an NVIDIA thing. It even says here how it's described. It's an NVIDIA developed deal. And just go, you can go with SSBC. Lens effects, uh, bloom, yeah, I got all that. Aliasing, multi sample, anti aliasing. So I just got everything up pretty much. And also I was thinking about I'm gonna I'm gonna play uh, terrorist hunt hunt mode, right? I'm gonna do that with max settings. And I'm thinking about one of the next times I, I play, like I'll do one little session of that, but then I'm thinking about maybe I'll do a session where I'm going to turn off some of these effects because some of these effects they make the game look better. You know what I mean? Like like there's more effects going on. But the thing is maybe some of those effects they might be a hindrance to you being able to see clearly. You know, you're blowing walls up and explosions are going on, bullets, you know, all this decal shit going on cluttering up the screen on some PCs it would slow things down but on mine with this new video card that I got recently it's it's just gonna put more stuff on the screen that you have to see through it's like more stuff on the screen that could distract you so in one of these I'm gonna turn that off and see how that if how different it looks but first things first I'm going to run the in-game benchmark here, and after I run the benchmark, it's going to um, show the results. And there is a difference in the results if I'm recording or not. Um, so I'm going to just stop recording right now, and I'm going to come back with the results. Okay? Good. The results of the benchmark... Uh, while not recording, as you can see overall, the average was uh, 84.3 FPS. 
I've done this before and it was getting 85 so 84 85 that's what I'm getting with my i5 2500k at stock and my r9 380 at stock so okay Okay, now this time I'm, I'm just going to keep the settings the same, and I'm going to actually run the benchmark. Okay, so there's going to be a performance hit. Uh, I believe the performance hit with the recording codec I'm using, it's going to be about 5%. There's another one that I use in pretty much all my other videos, which is more like 10%, but with this one, it should be about 5%. So hopefully, it it's probably going to dip into the 70s on average, but we'll see. Alright, so we're seeing like all this smoke and debris. Instead of actually, I don't necessarily have to play a session to maybe demonstrate what I was talking about. Because um, I know if you turn off certain effects, like the lens bloom and the ambient occlusion, when those explosions happen, there's going to be less stuff in the air that's going to like obscure your vision. In a game like this, in a Twitch shooter like Rainbow Six, it's not to your advantage to have all that on the screen. Uh, I mean, it, it looks cool, and it looks nice, and it's more advanced and all this shit, but it's it's just going to, like, get in the way of you being able to see your targets, which you're, you're breaching into places, and there's going to be campers, and, you know, you want to be able to see them. You want as much of an advantage being able to see them, because they're going to be standing still, looking at you through a hole in the wall and stuff like that. Or when you're camping on defense and they're coming in through the smoke, you want to be able to see through the smoke at them. Okay, so uh, performance dropped from 84 to 80 while recording. Now let me just go under effects just going to disable some of these things. Depth of field, that's going to help you see stuff. So I'm not going to leave that alone. Excuse me, I mean I am going to leave that alone. Um, ambient occlusion. I got a feeling that has something to do with what I was talking about, so I'm going to turn that off. Reflection quality. I'll keep that on. I think the big troublemaker of what I was talking about was lens effects and I think ambient occlusion. But uh, let me just apply these changes. And I'll run the benchmark and see if how things look differently. No one of these settings, it has something to do with just getting rid of the smoke in the air and the debris in the air. Just get rid of the asbestos, you know. Can we just cut down on the asbestos? There's at least two booms in this. Well, that looked about the same. That looked about the same, too. And that was while recording, 
So I gained uh, 7 frames per second even while I was recording by turning off those things. Okay, I would say that looked just about the same. Although, if you were going to play this competitively, I would still suggest turning off lens effects. I just can't see how that, that would help you. Ambient occlusion. I guess... I think for the rest of the video, I'm just going to keep everything... I'm just going to keep everything on. I kind of want to, you know show off what the game is supposed to look like so I'm just gonna leave that stuff as is how it was when I originally started recording all right so for the sake of testing things out even further I just ran the benchmark on the lowest uh, preset the low preset and I've come to the conclusion that no matter how low you put the settings, there's always going to be, you know, smoke and debris uh, when you're like breaking things, when you're blowing things up, and you know, just killing the quality of things. You know, you want the game to look nice, so there, there's going to end up being stuff obstructing your vision anyway. So you, yeah, you might as well just leave it all on. It's most important is if you're you're getting that 60 FPS that's that's your goal if you have a monitor with a higher refresh rate maybe go go for you know 120 or something higher than 60 but always want that always want that uh, 60 FPS now something else I noticed was before I did this, I've, I'm shooting this part right now after I've shot everything else, chronologically. And what I've noticed is that this, this last setting here, uh, multi-sample anti-aliasing, the temporal filter, filtering, if you have that off, when I have like a, let me go, yeah. When I have it on the highest settings I could have, if I turn the temporal filtering off, instead of getting like an 85 FPS on the benchmark, it drops down to uh, 65. So you could read the description there for yourself. I would suggest always keeping this temporal filtering on because 20 FPS going from 85 to 65 even though it's it's still above 60 that just it's just something to keep in mind this this last setting here multi sample anti aliasing you'll have a very good performance gain if you have uh, temporal filtering on that is, I think that's the end of this benchmark section. I'm going to go into, uh, well, I already recorded it, but uh, next part's going to be uh, talking about the operations menu and how you unlock stuff. Oh, and I didn't mention this, but uh, if you look up on the screen, even though I'm in the options menu, um, the renowned points, if you look, it says uh, 993. That's what your renowned points. There's like a yellow number and dog tags that that's what you use to unlock stuff i didn't mention that before but that's what that is so while i've been playing the beta you gain experience which i don't really see what the point of leveling up in experience is other than showing how much you played the game and i think other people can see what level you are so there's that when, when I've been playing the beta, what I've been more concerned with is uh, getting these points called uh, Renown Points, which is what you use to unlock uh, the Operators, which are like these, uh, these classes that you get to select, whether 
you're an attacker or a defender. When you play Terrorist Hunt, you can only be an attacker, which is why I primarily unlocked uh, attacker classes. I've unlocked two defender classes and I've never used them because I haven't um, haven't played multiplayer yet. In fact, my best experience playing the beta, it's really just been Lone Wolf on Terrorist Hunt just because there's no lag and you get good uh, experience with just um, the combat of the game. I know the guys are, you know, shooting at you like stormtroopers and they're inaccurate, but it is still a challenge because in Rainbow Six, your health doesn't regenerate. I mean, you start off with 100 uh, points of health and it doesn't go up unless you're playing with some other guys. So doing the whole lone wolf thing, it is a challenge in itself. So as you play you get experience you get renown points and you need renown points to unlock these different classes and the way that you unlock classes which you can't do this if you're like in the middle of, in between uh, multiplayer games you have to actually go to a separate menu uh, in the beta and it's there's a good chance it's gonna be like this in the game hopefully it won't be <laughs> alright but what you have to do is you have to go to the uh, operators menu and it it's kind of being uh, obscu uh, blocked off by my Riva tuner, st Riva tuner statistics server like the overlay going on right now which uh, you're gonna be able to look at while I'm playing the game to see how much VRAM I'm using and you know CPU performance and all that stuff but you gotta go into the operators menu you had renowned points which I actually do I do have yeah you need 500 to unlock your first uh, operator and depending on where you go from there unlocking different operators you could spend another 500 to unlock some but if you're getting them from the same category it goes up from 500 to a thousand and it escalates let's see if I can demonstrate this so there's three categories here. You got SAS, GIGN, and GSG9. You go under SAS. See now I've already unlocked one operator from this category so if I were to unlock another one it would cost me a thousand. Which I don't have. Go under here. Once again, I've unlocked one from here, so it would be a thousand to get to get another one. And again, I can't get any more. Well, anyway, let's let's just go to the ones that I do have. When I'm going to be playing Lone Wolf, I'm going to be playing as uh, Sledge in one, and I'm going uh, to use Fuse in the other. When I've done uh, Terrorist Hunt in multiplayer, so I'm you know you're cooperatively playing with another four people going after the terrorists. I try going Thermite, but if someone else picks Thermite, I go Sledge or. Uh, one of these other ones. Thermite's good because you can uh, breach through uh, reinforced walls and just in general sledge is just useful because you can just smash open walls like on the fly in a way that you can't with like other classes. Okay so other than unlocking classes, what else you can do with Renown Points is you go under the different classes that you've unlocked and you can kind of change what your default loadout is. But what you, what's most important that you can do in these uh, settings is you can buy uh, different attachments. For your weapons and you can't do this on any other menu in the game if you're in between um, multiplayer games and you're in a lobby you can't buy these in the beta 
so you have to totally exit out back out of whatever you're you're doing and come to this menu to do this I think if you're in a squad and you haven't gone into multiplayer, if you're in a squad with some of your friends, you can go to this menu. But otherwise, you just need to back out if you're already uh, matchmaking. So what I've already done with my extra renown points is I've purchased... Uh, yeah, just I've gotten a red dot sight and a flash hider on every assault rifle or every uh, primary weapon that I have. And I've also gotten uh, silencers and the uh, laser sight. Yeah, mountable laser sight that increases hip fire accuracy. I mean, that's that's an attachment where there's no downside to, to it, so you might as well buy that for like all your classes. If you got some extra renown points. Now, with suppressor, you do lose some damage. Like, if I take it off. I would, um, the handgun would be doing 53 points of damage, but with it on, I does 45. I'm all for putting all these attachments on. I'm okay with it. I don't think it makes, makes much of a difference. I don't use my secondaries too much anyway. Uh, I'm not much of a fan of the like the the full auto like you no know, submachine gun secondaries these machine pistol secondaries I'm not going for it because especially in this case okay so this SMG here has a clip size of 16 and the damage is uh, 34 so yeah it, it has like a pretty kick-ass fire rate but the clip size isn't that great, and the damage isn't that great. While with some of these handguns, they're doing more damage, and the clip size is the same. And that that's just totally my style when it comes to the secondaries. I'd rather have the handguns that do more damage, and they have like the same clip size. That's what I'm doing. And also, normally, I wouldn't have um, hand grenades as a secondary. Uh, excuse me, not a sector, as a as a gadget. But because I'm going to be doing Team Hunter solo, I want as much uh, as much offense as I can have. See, especially like with my Sledge class, I I'm not going to be breaching doors or walls with uh, the breach charges. I'm I'm going to be using my hammer or I'm going to be meleeing through the barricades. And having these extra hand grenades, they're going to help with getting kills, which is what your primary goal is in Terrorist Hunter. And I'm going to be the only guy out there killing these guys, so that's why I'm going to be using hand grenades. Terrorist Hunt, Lone Wolf. Normal. VRAM usage in this game with max settings, it's about 2.5 uh, gigs of VRAM. You can see for yourself. Now we're going to see, it doesn't matter where I come in from. There's one particular thing that really bothers Eliminate me the about... Eliminate the terrorists. There's one particular thing that bothers me about the terrorist hunt mode, and that's a type of defender that they just have, like, these nitro charges, like, on them. And what they end up doing is they just charge at you, they just run at you, and explode on contact. It's... It's like this Call of Duty death streak uh, called Dead Man's Hand, but they're like running at you. It's like the Javelin glitch from Modern Warfare 2. Does anybody remember the Javelin glitch from MW2? That was some bullshit. And y you can hear them coming. So I'll tell you when I hear them. You'll hear them too.
Whoa. Aggressive, aren't you? That's, that's one of them. Run. 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 Hear him? He's making like that Darth Vader wheezing sound in a hazmat soon. Uh, hazmat suit. You do not want to mess with those guys. I mean, you gotta kill them, but they're dangerous as fuck. Oh my god, he came outside? Dude, where... Oh. I wasn't talking about him. I'm just worried about the bombers. The other guys are easy. These suicide bombers are bastards. Okay, that's one down. There's usually two or three out of like all the uh, terrorists you gotta hunt down. I hear another one. You can actually use the sledgehammer to break uh, barbed wire in one shot, but I want to uh, save my sledgies for when I uh, really need to breach a wall. Well, I'll just do it here to show. Just breaks it in one hit. That's that's nice. They just have to get that one extra bullet in the mag. Okay. Okay, here we go again. Those guys have heavy body armor, but if you get, you know, one shot in on their head, they seems like they drop pretty easily, especially after shooting them in the chest a bit. They got they got some of the most broken body armor going on these AI bots with the the nitro charges on them. Dude, when they light up red and they're coming at you, it is just bad shit about to happen. I they're just overpowered. I don't even think that's even a class you can select. That's just like this cheap artificial Call of Duty death streak difficulty obstacle that they put into this. side on that. I heard you. There's still 11 guys. Whoa. thinking about going outside and scaling up the house. I'm gonna go low first before I do that. Oh, there's always guys in here. Hello. Flash me. Now that would have been a real stupid move to do in multiplayer, because obviously I, the guy guy in that room, the last dude in the room, he'd be looking in there. I didn't like clear my corners really. Whoa, there's another guy in there. Shit. How many of you guys watching this? Saw me just run out of that room while I was talking, and there was still another guy in there. There were four dudes in there. You know, what I was thinking about doing was I was going to smash this in, shoot anybody that was immediately there, and then chuck a hand grenade. It just it just didn't happen. That's I was thinking about doing that, and I didn't do it. I kind of wish I, I would have. Okay, I'm going to go outside... The 
Spider-Man stuff. Oh yeah, to do this, it's pretty simple. You just go up to any kind of uh, wall or, you know, outside. <sighs> Anything that it looks like you could do this to, you, you probably can. Especially if you're outside of the, uh, the house. And on PC, you just hold the space bar to uh, repel up. Notice how I'm moving around, and you could do it all over here. So it's hold to repel, and then at other places, you just press the spacebar to, uh, to vault or mantle, if you will. Up here. That clear pretty much cleared out most of these places. I mean, not most of the places, but most of the guys are dead. That's what I really meant to say there. So, as I'm climbing up, I can actually change my stance. So I'm kind of right side up. If I hit C, all of a sudden I'm upside down now, right? Now, I wonder, can I... Also, uh, it takes three melee attacks to break open a, a barricade. Those are like all the like boards on windows and uh, door entrances that have like the yellow X on them. You can just break through them with three melee attacks, or you could shoot through them. And if someone is meleeing through them, if you can see them meleeing through them, just shoot the door. There's bullet penetration and more than likely you'll kill them if you have the right angle on them. It's risky to melee through the the barricades if if someone's seeing you do it on the other side because you're you're a sitting duck. Let me just fly in here. Uh, these are these nitro cells. I hate those things. I don't know what's up with the terrorists. They they just like drop them all over the place. You can hear them. It's a viable option to just blow them up with a hand grenade if they're just all over the place. Where's that coming from? There's nitro on the other side of this wall, I can hear it. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. You do, okay. Let me go back out. come to them on the other side although they're they're probably chasing me let me just come to them on the other side Shotgun. Blue four eliminated off four. If that if he hadn't rushed in there, I probably would have sledgehammered that wall and got him through that. Right, Lone Wolf completed there. I, I did not get blown up. Nice. Now for the next one, I'm going to switch up my class, which 
if you're playing multiplayer, um, I've noticed that the Riot Shield classes, they seem kind of OP whether you're on offense or defense. Right? But in this, it doesn't help as much as you might think because those bombers, because to be able to use a Riot Shield class, you have to give up your speed because, like the last class I was using, Sledge had medium speed and had medium body armor too, but I gotta say the, the C4 on those bomber, those suicide guys, they do not give a fuck, they do not care about your riot shield, they don't care about your armor, you're just gonna get insta-killed by those guys rushing on you, which is dangerous because all I have is a handgun and a riot shield. This is extremely dangerous doing this, this mode. With, with a riot shield and a handgun while those bombers are out there extremely dangerous I don't recommend it I really don't but I'm gonna try it here <laughs> I think I eliminate I've, the terrorists I've only done this once uh, where I've successfully done this with a riot shield and a handgun oh you know I wanted a different map see the maps there's, there's, uh, I think there's three maps you can play them during the day and night. So this is the map house, and before I was playing it during the night, and now I'm playing it during the day. And I think this is kind of like the, the de facto map that was, you know, originally shown at E3 when the game premiered. And I think this is going to be the map that a lot of people gravitate towards that they want to play. See, right here, I would like to be able to climb, like, jump over this fence, you know, but they're just giving me the option to repel, which I'm disappointed in that. I'm noticing quite a bit of that here and there. like shooting me in the back with an assault rifle and then he still ended up blowing himself up that's screwed up and you know what in a way that's kind of punishment for using a riot shield because from what I've seen of people playing this game riot shield class is 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 really annoying and really OP and you can say that serves me right for using that class but you know I'm playing against bots come on man I don't even think that's even a class you could you could pick. And why do they keep putting me on house? I'm not selecting to retry this mission. There's other missions I could do. Eliminate all hostiles. If you're an attacker in the Rainbow Six Siege beta, and you're going to have a shield, you're probably going to go Fuse. There might be another one, but you're probably going to go Fuse. And there's... there's a, I bet this class is pretty popular for cheesing people out with the ride shield. Two of them. Dude! See what I'm talking about? It's almost like... I wonder it's like when I'm shooting them. Am I, am I shooting them somewhere where it's like it's... It's literally like not doing any damage or just so minuscule it like doesn't even matter, you know? It's like 
I gotta say, I wasn't exactly going for headshots. And why am I only playing on house today? The other days during the beta, there were like other, other, um, other maps I could play on. It seems like every time I've been only getting house, they might have changed what maps you could play on in the beta. Which is all right if it's if things are more stable. I'm okay with that. I mean, they've been doing the beta for you know some time now, so maybe they got the maybe matchmaking is more stable. Maybe there's better ping and all that. But and this Eliminate is kind of the hostiles. like I said, this is like the de facto map. At first, there were three or four levels you could play during the day and night. It was like a Hereford base, a consulate, a house, maybe another one. I know, I know there was at least three. I need to get a headshot on those guys. Whoa! What the? F <laughs> Whoa. Now I gotta admit, this game mode, it's not intended to play uh, solo. Okay. It really isn't. You know what, I'm gonna exit out of this. I'm gonna return the main menu. Confirm quit mission. I'm going to I'm going to cut the video here. I'm going to come back after I get into a game. I'm going to do some uh terrorist hunter um uh matchmaking, not lone wolf. Got to say the whole riot shield trying to do that uh lone wolf terrorist hunt. It's you're gonna run into that that problem that you've been seeing me have. That's it's just not a good idea. You're better off going sledge or almost anything else. I wouldn't recommend a shotgun either. You just want like a machine gun, high fire rate, large mag. You know, you want the 25, 30 round um, gun doing like 50 points of damage per bullet. That's what you want. I'll be back. I'm going to match a terrorist hunt and matchmaking. Well, it looks like I was able to find a match pretty quick. It's odd how there's no audio. Something seems to be wrong. I just got to this menu. Trying to select my operator. There's no audio. Already selected. Oh, someone already selected. Okay, okay. Confirm loadout. I'm gonna go thermite. If everybody wants to go that way, I vote out. Vote out of sync. Why do that? Game is set to push the talk. Eliminate all of the terrorists. I don't think we this have. Is it. We don't need much communication to do what we're going to be doing. Although, if someone asks questions, I will answer them. So, everybody's... We're all kind of doing our own thing. It's the nature of this mode. Connection here. That's awfully close. Oh, what happened to him? He got gypped. Hate those guys. Get my 
thermite on. You already cleared it, but I want to use it. Fucking old. I have gas live. There'd be no other. There'd be no other way to get through that unless you had thermite. These reinforced walls you can't bust through them unless you got thermite. Kid me, that was unbreachable. It counts as concrete. Oh shit. Can't even breach that with thermite. You can breach that though. Alright, I'm backing up. I'm dry. One, one guy left. Someone's on him. Oh, he's gone. So this mode is kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> I'll admit it, it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. Back out, turn to main menu, confirm quit mission. And that is an audio bug and it's going to be stuck on that until I get into something else. That audio bug, it's going to be there for good. I mean, you hear that clicking, man. It's been clicking like that for like a minute. I might have to actually like close the game for that to stop. real man it won't stop I, I can't I can't deal with that I'm gonna I'll be back now for my fourth attempt doing terrorist hunt I think it worked it worked when I was doing it on the normal difficulty and then you Put it on hard and all this BS happens. Oh, okay, we got enough. I think most people that would play this mode, they would just play on normal. You know, if, if they especially wanted a challenge, they would just play against, you know, normal. They, they'd play against real people in multiplayer. I think that's typically how people would work in this. I couldn't be Sledge. I didn't try Fuse. I don't want to. I don't want to use a riot shield. You saw what happened. I'm not taking that risk of getting blown up. Not gonna do it. Wouldn't be prudent. See how aggressive they Eliminate are on all hard. The always say that. How much more aggressive on hard are they going to be? Normal, hard, and realistic. <laughs>
god, look how much damage the bomb did. Four boards are all gone. die when I shoot you in the head. Stay we need to go downstairs. Throwing frag grenade! I'm just doing it for door. points at this point. Op 4 eliminated. Blue 4 mission successful. Stay in this lobby and do one more. Do one more and I'll call it. Eliminate all hostiles. Wait, go, 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 go. Just a tip, but breach windows at the top floor because then they can't sneak out. Okay, let's just see what other people are doing. Who's in the lead? Bigfoot. Go to Bigfoot. Need to survey the perimeter. Watch my back. Okay, that AI, they're sticking together. Stop right there. Camping over Bigfoot there. Save us all, Rex. Or guest. That didn't look right. Oh, uh, okay. On my. <laughs> that didn't look right. I mean, he was he was shooting that guy. I thought that would have killed him. And I mean, you you guys be the judge. You saw that worked. Okay, that's <laughs> that's that's enough of that. Okay, so I've run the in-game benchmark. I've I've ran it twice. I've 
played Lone Wolf and Terrorist Hunt. I didn't do multiplayer, but I'm sure most people playing this, uploading things to YouTube, they're probably going to be doing multiplayer, and it's, you know, it might be more interesting, but in my video, I just went with Terrorist Hunt Solo. That was kind of the unique thing that I, I did. Lone Wolf Terrorist Hunt. And you know when you do multiplayer in a beta, there's going to be a, a lot. There's going to be a lot more issues just getting everybody together, and there's going to be you know more latency and shit. When I was doing terrorist hunt, there was no latency, zero. So no Johns on that. Okay, that that about does it for this video. Uh, later.